Okay, assalamualaikum and a very good afternoon to everyone. Alaikum salam, sir. Okay, alhamdulillah, we meet again for this time. Okay, although it uh, conducted by online, okay, for this week, the class will be conducted by online because the university have given us a permission, okay, to let the student who, uh, I mean that uh, some of you are really, uh, would like to go to their hometown and however, uh, the class need to be uh, to be carried out, still need to be carried out and that's why uh, it by this week, it will be conducted by online, okay. Actually, I'm planning, okay, this lab session, our first lab session, uh, we're going to uh, see all of you in our lab. However, uh, because of the situation and some of us will not join uh, in a face-to-face, -face, uh, so I have to change the plans and we meet in, in online. So today I would like to give, I mean, that I conducted the class in online mode. And I'm still hoping that uh, students will uh, join this class, okay, because the numbers is still low. Because for this group 2B, we have around 35, uh, 34 of you and the number is still low we still on uh, there are only 23 of you join the class just join the class we're still hoping that some of your friends still come and join the class okay okay uh there are three agenda that we would like to uh, go through with you today okay the first thing is regarding the lab assignment the second thing is regarding the project and the last one is uh, regarding the lecture, okay? This uh, three agenda need to be complete by today. And hopefully all of us can uh, stay until the end of this uh, class. So uh, all of you could get the details, okay? What I would like to deliver to all of you, okay? So we move to the our first agenda is regarding the lab assignment, okay? If you already went to Kalam, okay, you went to Kalam, you, already, you can already see, okay, lab assignment one has been uploaded in Kalam, okay. Uh, lab assignment one actually is, oh, I think uh, we have to stop for a while, around five minutes uh, to give the, I mean, that the, uh, 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 the azan okay so kita akan sambung nanti dalam lima minit lagi kan eh? okay
Okay, we resume back our class. Okay, sorry. Okay, because the azan is uh, okay. So, uh, regarding the lab assignment, so uh, I have mentioned before in our first class, I think, regarding the lab assessment. So, for your information, the lab assessment will be individual and it will contribute 15% of the coursework mark. Okay. So, each of you should uh, submit your lab assignment. Okay. And all of you compulsory to submit it. If you don't submit your lab assignment, so you will not get any marks for lab assessment. Okay. Lab assignment assessment. So if you see here, lab assignment one has been uploaded. Okay. There will be uh, one, I think three lab assignment will be uploaded. Okay. Uh, for the whole semester. And the maximum is four. I think uh, there will be only three. Okay, each of the lab assignment uh, will contribute the marks for 20%, uh, 20. And the total marks for the lab assignment is 60. Okay, however, after we do the calculation, it will only contribute 15% for your coursework mark for this semester only. So, the lab assignment is individual. For the first lab, uh, it reflects what we have learned, what we are going to learn in chapter two and chapter three. Okay, if you see here in the chap, uh, this lab assignment one. Okay. Okay, in this lab assignment one. Okay, the topic that cover for the lab assignment one is chapter two and chapter three. So most of the question will, uh, you have to complete the task uh, that we cover for chapter one, chapter three. Okay, you have to read, okay, the instruction carefully to understand it well. Okay, if we see here, you also have to follow the format. Okay, how to write the report. Okay, for my session, section two, both of the group, 2A and 2B. Okay, for my session 2A and 2B, I would like you to combine all the lab assignment in one report. Okay, which means that although the lab assignment will be delivered to all of the students partially, I would like you to combine by the end of the semester on week 13 or week 14, you have to compile in a one document, in one report. Okay, which means that there will be lab assignment one, lab assignment two, and lab assignment three in a one report. Okay, so for example, in a lab assignment one, there are two tasks need to be complete by all of the students. Okay, if you see here, the task one cover the chapter we, uh, we have learned in chapter two. Okay, uh, and task two, we're going to cover what we're going to learn in chapter three. Okay, so you have to uh, complete all the question for task one and task two. Okay. Right now, I think all of you already get, uh, already get this book, the lab manuals. Okay, what was in the lab manual? Okay, lab manuals contain the lab exercise. Okay, there are uh, around nine lab exercise contained in these lab manual books. Okay, each of the lab exercise will, will reflect the chapter that we're going to learn for the whole semester for this semester. For example, the lab exercise one, okay, is a lab manual that gives you to polish your skill, what you're going to learn, what you have learned in chapter two. Okay, uh, hopefully all of you can uh, open your own lab manuals and we can see on the lab exercise one. Okay, if you see here, lab exercise one, okay, the objective of lab exercise one is to manipulate the data by using mathematical function provided in Excel and create a graph 
based on the data that has been processed. What we have learned in chapter two, we going, we have learned regarding what the analytical tools, how to manipulate the data. So based on this exercise, you will have to polish your skill, okay? How to manipulate the data. For example, in the task one, manipulate the data, you have to do some mathematical function to get the summation of all uh of uh all of all of uh, sorry okay you mean that the table that we see in a uh, task one uh, lab exercise one is based on the attack data okay that has been collected from january to december so based on this data you have to get the average the uh identify the maximum value okay for each of the uh, attack that happened okay from january to december okay by using excel lah. okay by using excel and for the second task is you have to create a graph based on that data okay if you move to the lab assignment two actually uh it have the same question but uh diff uh, it the uh the question is a little bit the same but have a different kind of situation in lab assignment one for the task one you have to find five kind of attacks of cybersecurity. you have to google it you have to find the data by yourself okay in the lab exercise we already provide the data however in lab assignment one for task one you have to find your own data okay you have to find five kind of attacks and the data should be uh in a year okay the amount that i should be in a year a month or several of years and then you have to manipulate the data and then calculate the total of attack for each category and then based on the graph you have to identify the high, uh, highest attack and give some possible reason why the highest attack happened okay you have to find why uh for example in second month february uh, in the month of February, okay, the highest attack happened in this month, and why this happened? Maybe during that time there is a what a virus, a new virus has been exposed, right? That's why there are a lot of issue, okay, regarding this kind of attacks. Okay, so you have to uh, give some possible reason why this uh, happened, and for the next question, you have to create awareness statement, okay, to the public, okay, and how to reduce and prevent the attack from happening in the future, okay, because we already learned regarding the security awareness, right? So you have to write some awareness statement, okay, how you would like to behave, how you would like to prevent this kind of attack happen in the future. Okay, that is for task one. In uh, that is for, I mean, what should you do in the task one? Uh, then, uh, for the task two is regarding the cryptography. Okay, we are going to learn the chapter cryptography after this. Okay, this is for lab assignment. So, mau faham ya? Harapnya, boleh faham? Yeah. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, tetapi, okay, for today, okay, I would like you to do the lab assignment month for task one by yourself. Which means the lab exercise, you can do it by your own. Okay. And for the lab assignment one, task one also, please do it by your own. Okay. So we're going to continue on lab exercise 2 and task 2 lab assignment 1 on next week during the lab session. Okay. So uh, that is the first agenda. The second agenda is regarding your project. Okay. If you see, okay, the document for project has been uploaded in Kalam. You may download it. However, I will explain it. Okay. The, regarding the question for project assessment by next week okay so today what i would like you to do i would like you to form a group okay for uh project assessment project assessment will be uh i'm completed in a group 
Okay, the maximum number for each group will be four. Okay, however, there will be one group. Okay, that going to have five group members. Okay, because of what? Okay, our section, section two, have 65 students. If we divide it by 16 group, there will be four members of each group. Okay, however, there is another one student who not going to have any group. So one of the group, we're going to have five members. Okay, I will share you the link. Okay, it will be first come, first serve. You have to write your name on the, uh, I mean that on the, uh, on the document, okay, on the sheet that will be shared online after this, okay, okay, so you, you may form the group and choose your own partner and the maximum will be four, however, there will be one group going to have five group members, okay, that's very simple and the project will be conducted in a group, okay, and the second thing, what should you do, okay, if you see here, in a uh, project assessment you have to minute each time you uh each time okay each time you have a group meeting which means that if um uh, if you're going to have a discussion amongst the group member you have to minutes the meeting okay details it what are the things that have been discussed what the things has been done okay during that discussion so at least okay at least there will be three time of meeting for this semester okay on the project assessment that is the minimum things okay if you do not fulfill the requirement so you will not get the full marks okay there is a rubric okay so the rubric also has been shared so hopefully you can read carefully how you will be elevated uh, evaluate for the project assessment for the semester okay and what should you do for this week i hopefully all of you can form the group first and then divide the task okay who will be appointed as a group leader and uh try to form a group okay make a, a whatsapp group by your own and maybe for the first uh, meeting you have to the first meeting that will be reported i mean that will be minute is regarding the how to form a group how to decide the group leader what kind of task that should be given for each of your group members and the group uh, project, you have to submit it by end of this semester. I mean, on the week 13 or week 14. I will announce it later when you're going to submit for my session, session two. Okay. The next thing is regarding the project also is uh, because this is a project assessment. So by the end of the semester, I will only accept it okay one submission per group so i will only receive okay uh 16 report from my section section two okay so which means that the group leader will submit the report in kalam okay, okay that is the second agenda so I have already finished, uh, I mean that, uh, explain to you, okay, uh, on the first agenda and second agenda. Next, we now move to the third agenda is regarding our lecture. Okay, today, I would like to give a lecture on chapter three. Uh, yes, I know that we, on last week, we, uh, on chapter two, uh, we stop at chapter 2. However, I would like you to read it by yourself on chapter 2. Okay, because I think we are already running out of time, okay, to complete and finish on chapter 3. Okay, because uh, the midterm test is on 12th of November. I think we should concentrate finishing it early as soon as possible so we can do some exercise, okay, before all of you uh, sit down for the midterm test. So today I would like to give a lecture on chapter three. Okay. 
Uh, chapter 3 also a very long uh, chapter. Okay, I it will going to take around 2 to 3 weeks to finish this chapter. Okay, I think chapter 3 also has been uploaded in Kalam. Okay, today I would like to give a lecture on uh, chapter 3 of the part 1. Okay, for the part 1. And maybe uh, tomorrow also we're going to have a lecture and I'm going to continue okay, on the part 1 also until uh, end of the uh, uh, part 1. Okay, so part 1 will cover the introduction of the chapter cryptography and will cover the topics until the classical uh, cryptography. Okay, we're going to cover until the classical cryptography topic regarding classical cryptography. So, okay. Boleh kita mulakan lecture kan? Tak ada masalah kan? Tak ada, sir. Boleh. Okay. Okay, this will be the slide for chapter 3, cryptography part 1. Okay, we will move to the outline, the slide for the outline, what we're going to learn in this chapter. Okay, there will, of course, there is introduction and then we move to the terminology. Okay, in the chapter 3, we're going to learn uh, a few more terminology. For chapter 3 like the plain text what is the plain text ciphertext encryption decryption key symmetry and asymmetric crypto system cryptanalysis and brute force attack and also we're going to learn types of cipher okay there will be a classical cryptography symmetric encryption asymmetric encryption public crypto system uh, and other type of implementation in cryptography such as, as Message authentication, hash function, and digital signature. So for part one, I mean that uh, I will cover until classical cryptography. Um, uh, however, for today, okay, I would like to give a lecture until uh, three point four cyber types okay we we'll try to finish as soon as possible lah. okay tadi pun on the other punya group pun saya bagi lecture yang sama maknanya saya ulang balik lecture yang sama jugalah okay it's a bit tired because i'm going to explain it again and uh, replay again what i'm going to uh, explain to all of you ada lagi nak join eh okay so, okay, learning outcome, hopefully, lah. hopefully by end of this chapter, okay, all of you, the student, okay, in this class, should define the cryptography definition because we are going to learn uh, some terminology and hopefully all of you could understand, okay, what is the terminology and how uh, it would define in this chapter. Okay, and hopefully all of you can explain the terminology used in cryptography, apply some cryptography technique and approaches. There are a few types of uh, technique that we're going to learn. Okay, actually, uh, the techniques we will divide into two. The first part is regarding the classical cryptography and the second part will be the modern cryptography. Okay, the modern cryptography is uh, how we would like to differentiate between this type of uh, cryptography is mostly of the modern cryptography using a mathematical equation okay which means that like rsa delphi hillman okay like the hash function okay this kind of cryptography technique using a mathematical equation okay um Different to the classical cryptography, the techniques is uh, a simple techniques, okay? And however, you need to understand it, how the 
that uh, you can apply the technique. So you could answer the question in final exam or in the midterm test. Okay. And uh, the next uh, thing is that hopefully by end of the semester, understand the concept of challenge of public crypto system. Okay, understand the concept of matrix authentication, hash function, and digital signature. Digital signature. If you look here, this is the type of modern cryptography because it used the mathematical equation. Okay, so don't worry because in the final exam, you're allowed to bring calculator. I know. Okay, mungkin dalam final exam, kan? Tersebabkan terlalu, orang kata, panik ke ataupun tu, Sehingga kan tak boleh nak mengira satu tambah satu berapa. Ha, terpaksa guna calculator. You have to use calculator because you are already anxiety lah, ada panic lah. Kena guna calculator. Ha, walaupun soalan dia mudah saja, tak perlu guna calculator pun. Tapi we allow you to bring calculator, okay? To make sure that you can uh, use the time wisely lah. We're not wasting your time, okay? So you are allowed to bring calculator in the final exam. Okay, especially when uh, you like to use it uh, to solve the question in cryptography. Okay, we move to the first slide regarding cryptography. This is the introduction. <laughs> okay. Okay, what mean of uh, cryptography here? If we see here, originated by the Greek. Okay, cryptography is originated by the Greek language. Okay, crypto means secret and graphia mean writing. So if you combine these two uh, word, it given what? Secret writing. So during that time, they're using the secret writing to keep confidential of the uh, some information that you would like to hide. Okay, from the other parties when they communicate. Uh, each other. Okay, cryptography is defined as a secret writing. Lah. Okay, we can say that cryptography can be defined as a secret writing. Lambat ni masuk ni. Okay. So, in a technical, cryptography is a mapping of readable text to a format that cannot be read, okay, from a readable text like, for example, we're saying that book is a readable text and then we will like to deliver the message to our friend. We like to keep it a secret so a book will be converted to unreadable text like a co-op, okay. Co-op is a unreadable text, okay. This kind of uh, word, unreadable text, will be delivered to our friend. Okay, so in early days, cryptography used to be performed by using manual techniques. Itulah disebabkan kita panggil classical cryptography because all of the techniques using a manual techniques. Tak perlu nak guna calculator. Okay, however, for the modern cryptography, we are using the mathematical equation. So we need to use the calculator. Okay. Uh, so in the 5th century, a Sparta pupil, okay, a Sparta pupil used a method to encrypt a message using a paper made from down lonta. Down lonta is a one kind of leaf, okay, that they're using to encrypt the message. What they do, they have a wood, the Sparta pupil have a wood, and then they have a leaf. They attach the leaf to the wood, and then they write a message on it, okay. To make it unreadable, the Sparta people will remove the leaf. And then he will, uh, what they do, they will deliver, okay, the this, this scattered message to their friend. If their friend would like to read, okay, the uh, unreadable text, they have to attach back the leaf to get the meaning, the exactly readable text that they would like to know. Okay, that is Pata people. Okay, so this kind of process or crypto system we call Skytail. Okay, boleh faham kan setakat ni? Uh, mudah aja. Okay, so apa yang boleh kita katakan? The leaf, 
or down nonta that it have used by the sparta people is the key without the leaf okay the sparta people can turn uh can read the message okay because of what if they remove the leaf the message will be in a second uh okay can be read okay it's hard to be read it can be read but it's hard However, during that time, the technology, it can say that the word can't be read. Okay. Uh, orang dulu-dulu biasalah kan, teknologi dia orang. Okay. Uh, dia orang menggunakan this kind of process. We call that the, the encrypted process is sky tail. Okay. To prevent, uh, to keep the confidentiality of the uh, message that we would like to deliver to their uh, re uh, recipient. Okay. So, Julius Caesar, around 2,000 years ago. Semua kenal Julius Caesar? Ada yang tak kenal ke sini? Semua belajar sejarah kan? Betul? Oh, senyap ni. Session ni. Betul, ada, ada, ada. Uh, belajar, belajar. Belajar kan? Uh, semua dapat A sejarah kan? Okay, Julius Caesar is a Roman uh, leader, okay, during 2,000 years ago. What he do, he invented one kind of cryptography technique, okay, and the cryptography technique name after his, after his name. That's what we call Caesar cipher. What actually a Caesar cipher? Okay, in this method, each word in the text is moved two places after word in ABC character. Okay, kita tahu ABC, ABCD have 26 uh, letter, right? What they do in a Caesar cipher, they move the letter to uh, another two places. For example, we take A in the alpha, English alphabet. If you would like to implement Caesar cipher in this kind of uh, message, what we do, uh, the, they saying that they apply the key. Okay, the key is move two words, uh, two places for that alphabet. Okay, so A will be replaced with what alphabet? So A will be replaced with what? C. C. Andai pun. Mudah aja. Dalam slide pun dah ada. Jawab je. Okay. A will be replaced with C. And B will be replaced with B, uh, B will, re, uh, will be replaced with D, C will be replaced with E. However, you must remember, okay, to make it difficult. Uh, dia bagi kebat sikit lah. Okay, dia bagi kebat sikit. Okay, in the final exam, ataupun dalam final exam, ataupun midterm test nantilah. Okay, maybe the question, we saying that like this. Okay, by using Caesar cipher, encrypt this message. Uh, sorry, by using Caesar cipher, decrypt this message. However, the key that uh, will given to you is saying that please, uh, the Caesar cipher is uh, implement by moving a word by three places on your right. So, for example, if the readable text is A, okay, what is the answer for it? Three places on your right. So, upper the text here. Kalau two places is equal to what? Will be substitute, uh, substitute with C. And then, kalau three places will be substitute with mm. E. Eh, with D lah kan? Ha. With D, three places. A will, kalau dua places, A will be substitute with uh, C. Kalau three places, A will be substitute with D. Okay, itu uh, uh, kalau 3 to the right. How about kalau 3 to the left? Mm. 
A will be substituted with what? 3 to the left. Y. X. X. X, Y. Ha, mana satu ni? X. X. X, betul. Kalau tiga places, saya kata tiga places eh. Three places, not two places. X lah kan? Betul? Okay. Sekarang kita yeah. faham lah. Okay. Faham lah. Jadi dia ganti kepada maknanya it go uh, on the left of your alphabet. And we must know that Caesar cipher only have the alphabet, English alphabet, we have only 26. If you move 26 to the right and you move 26 to the left, okay, you will find the exactly, okay, readable text. Okay. Akan jumpa juga at the end of it. So, pusing-pusing mana-mana pun tetap akan jumpa. Jangan risau. Ha? Tak perlu calculator lah nak kira yang tu. Okay? Boleh ya? Hmm. Okay, tak perlu calculator nak kira yang tu. So, that is Caesar cipher. Okay, it's very simple. Okay? Then, however, the this method had been broken through analysis toward cipher text. Ha. Sebab mudah lah. It's been broken. Because of what? Kita dah tahu dah. Ha. Kita dah tahu dah dia punya alphabet, okay, the alphabet, okay, the the number of uh, places that will be uh, turn around and then to get the answer is 26 movement, although to the right or to the left, okay. So, this is uh, the weaknesses of a Caesar cipher. And Arabian is the first race that analyze substitution cipher cipher lah, yang break the code lah. Okay. Okay, Carl Kashkandi created a technique to solve the code by collecting all cipher character and counting the frequency usage of each character lah. Okay, the frequency usage ini Carl uh, uh, Kashkandi ni, he already found out. Okay. The frequency usage is only 26 because there are only 26 characters. Kalau dia menggunakan characters Arabic, lain lah. Kalau dia menggunakan characters yang lain pun lain lah. Okay. But, however, for the English characters, it's 26. It's mudah lah. This, okay. Itu sahaja. Okay. Why we will apply the cryptography dan kenapa kita menggunakan cryptography? Why we use cryptography? There are four, okay, reason why we use cryptography confidentiality, integrity, authentication, and non-reputation. Okay, the most important one or the first reason why, okay, the pupil early, uh, early age, okay, uh, beribu tahun yang lalu, 2,000 years ago, 3,000 years ago, okay, okay, the, the Sparta pupil, Julius, uh, Julius Caesar, created this kind of uh, techniques, okay, why? Because they would like to keep the confidentiality of the message. Okay? Uh, seperti kamu lah. Right? Nak hantar surat, oh, nak hantar message kepada pak wa mawa kamu. Right? Tak nak bagi orang baca. So, apa yang kita buat? Kita apply lah cryptography. Okay, we change the readable text to unreadable text. Deliver lah message tersebut. Uh, jadi mak ayah pun tak tahu message apa yang kau hantar. Kan? Uh, nak skip the secret sangat. Then, kalau kita tengok tu, kalau tak tahulah, kamu tahu tak, eh, ni apa, bahasa fa-fa, tahu kan? Pernah dengar kan? Safa, yafa, semua tu. Okay, itu pun adalah satu, adalah satu. This is also one of the example of cryptography technique. How you would like to change from readable text to unreadable text to keep the confidentiality of the message. Okay, the second reason is to keep the integrity. What meaning of integrity in using the, by using the cryptography here? Okay, a certain that there are no modification to the message being received. Okay, for example, there are two parties, A and B would like to communicate. They apply the cryptography to keep the confidentiality of the message. Okay, after B received the message from A, okay, it was in, it will be in a unreadable text. Okay, how to change it to readable text? 
they should have a key okay to convert it back after the using the key unfortunately the message was not the same these will give the sign of integrity which means that in the middle when they are delivering the message the message was transferred from a uh, a percent to b percent someone has intercepted it and modified it okay sebab itulah juga that's why we using the cryptography we would like to know is it the message integrity or not and the sec the third uh, reason is authentication okay using the same process also you would like to know is is it the message is exactly from a or someone in the middle has intercepted it if because before they are delivering the message both party and b already agreed with the scheme and with the key that they're going to use okay tetapi however at the end of uh, delivery the message b get the message try to convert it back on the readable text it found out the message is different can't be read so it will also authenticate the person who deliver it maknanya bukan a yang hantar there is someone modify it okay there are someone try to pretend as a okay uh, itu juga adalah untuk authentication and the last one is non reputation okay ini yang uh, kata the uh, what we are using or implement in our reality right now okay we have the process we implement this kind of process after we agree on the terms of what the rules okay the key that we're going to use the algorithm that we're going to use okay we know that he is the exactly person he is the exactly recipient so after the message has been delivered get the message the process is non reputation can't be denied ah uh, itu yang kita implement in our reality right now bila kita buat transaction okay we would like to transfer the money from uh, our account to the other account we have to approve it kita dah approve duit tu dah masuk tiba-tiba kita kata eh bukan account tu salah orang kita tak boleh deny we can't deny that process anymore because it's already gone through all the step by step this is non reputation we have already agree we already check the transaction semua dah lengkap and then we deny by the end the process uh, uh not having the problem however we are the problem uh, so that is the reason why we implement cryptography boleh ya okay we move to another slide okay this is the simple message transition what happened from the sender would we'll like to transmit the message to the recipient okay there is the outsider would we'll like to modify it so this will cover all why we using the cryptography lah okay based on the previous slide okay the terminology here we are going to move to on the terminology the first terminology that we are going to learn is clear text or plain text okay clear text or plain text refer to the readable text which mean that the text before we convert it to another to unreadable text we call clear text or plain text okay most of uh, after this we going to uh, replace it with symbol with p if you see p in the question so p is refer to the plain text okay boleh ya uh. so that is uh, clear text or plain text mean a readable uh, message that can be read okay before we convert it okay so next slide okay given p a plain text want to be transferred through a communication channel as a secret message okay we we'll like to transmit it to the recipient to the sender i mean to the sender okay so the process we deliver the message before we deliver the deliver the message uh, the message will be uh, gone uh, will be undergo another process one process before it we call change it convert it to unreadable text okay the process that convert okay from the plain text 
the text that can be read to a text that can't be read, we call it encryption. It's very simple. Okay, a process to convert readable text to unreadable text, we call encryption. So we get the unreadable text. We call the unreadable text as a ciphertext or C. Uh, itu adalah terminologi yang ketiga yang kita belajar. That is the third terminologi that we're going to learn in this chapter is ciphertext. Or we can use a symbol of C, represent of ciphertext. So ciphertext, okay, is the output after a plain text or readable text on the process for encryption. Okay, the output will be the ciphertext. Okay, from the plain text, okay, uh, we implement the process of encryption, change the plain text to unreadable text we call ciphertext. It's very simple and also it call a secret message lah. Selepas tu. And then we deliver the ciphertext to the the to the other parties or the sender lah. Oh, oh, oh sorry to the recipient so itu adalah uh, the terminology that we have learned the next terminology that we're going to learn is what a key what key actually or k represent the key okay in an encryption process okay to change the ciphertext to, uh, sorry, to change the plain text to ciphertext, they will be undergo one process we we'll call encryption. However, to uh, to use the uh, to apply the encryption process, we're going to use a key. The key is really important. Without the key, we can't do the encryption. Okay, we can change the unreadable text to readable text, which means that what we're saying that previously, said I mentioned before, uh, in the previous example, for the Sparta people. Okay, Sparta people. What they do, okay, the process of encryption, they use what? They write, they attach the leaf on the wood. And then they write it. And then they remove the leaf from the wood. And then we get the ciphertext. What are the key for this kind of uh, process? What are the key for this kind of process? We can say that the leaf is the key. Without the leaf, we can encrypt. And without the leaf, we can decrypt. Because we, if the Sparta people will like to hide the message, they write on the leaf they attach to the wood. They remove the leaf. The 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 word that they write on the wood will be in uh, scattered, hard to be readable, hard to be read. If they would like to read back the the words that read they write on the wood, they have to attach back the leaf. So the leaf will be the key in the process here. Cryptography encryption key will be going to use a parameter. Okay, in the process of encryption. Okay, ciphertext must undergo an inverse process to get the plain text back. Yes, of course, after the message, the ciphertext deliver to the recipient. Recipient will get unreadable text. Okay, we call ciphertext. To convert back the unreadable text to readable text, we call the process decryption. Okay, in decryption process, we're going to use key also to decrypt it back. Without the key, it can be decrypt the message. Same goes to the example I used before, lah, the Sparta people. Without the leaf, okay, the people can read what type of what kind of message that has been right on that word. Okay, the process we call decryption. Setakat ni faham, eh? Boleh, eh? Okay. Okay. If you see here in this slide, okay, this figure explain to you, okay, uh, what is encryption and what is decryption. This is the equation for it. Okay. You see here. Okay. C is equal to ciphertext. 
to get a ciphertext, the process we call encryption, and then we have uh we're going to use the plain text and then we also use a key okay to encrypt it to get the ciphertext okay and then we send the ciphertext to the reception reception get the ciphertext unreadable text to get to get knowing what are the exactly message sent by the sender so recipient we use the decryption process in the decryption process to get the plain text back this is the equation decrypt d equal to d in a function of c is the ciphertext okay we're using k to decrypt it to get the plain text so this is the figure that explained to it okay if you see here the learning about encryption and decryption we call cryptography Okay, the process to get the original text from the ciphertext we call cryptanalysis, which means that what? Cryptanalysis is a process to get unreadable text to, uh, to get the unreadable text, uh, text to, uh, to readable text. Okay, if you combine these two division, we call it a cryptology. Okay, this is the term that used. Okay. One another thing regarding the cryptanalysis, cryptanalysis actually is a term that using by the uh, pupil who do not know what kind of technique and key that using by the uh, recipient and sender when they communicate, which means that they try in error, okay, they try in error, they do not know, maybe, for example, Okay, A and B communicate. They're actually using the cipher text, uh, the Julius Caesar. However, as a hacker, the intruder would like to know the message. The intruder do not know what kind of uh, crypto system, that, uh, algorithm that has been used to implement, okay, to get the cipher text. So, they apply the cryptanalysis. Try uh, an error to get uh, to convert the unreadable text to readable text. We call it a breaking the code. Lah. Uh, this is what we call. So the cryptography system involves a set of rules for how to encrypt the plain text and how to decrypt the ciphertext. The encryption and decryption rules called algorithm often use a, a, call, a thing called a key denoted by K. So as uh, in alg uh, encryption algorithm okay there is a set of rules okay for example we say that uh, we using the same example the Julius Caesar we know that okay the algorithm for Julius Caesar okay is what okay uh, you have to move the alphabet to another places the key is what how many movement that you're going to use okay uh, that is the uh, uh we mean that the, the the rules is how you have to move the places okay to the right or to the left the key is how many places you have to move okay that is encryption algorithm now how we explain it okay we move to another slide is a systematic crypto system First of all, I would like to ask you, do you understand what the meaning of sys, uh, symmetric? So, orang boleh jawab? Any one of you can explain what is a symmetric? What do you understand about symmetric? Same. Sama. Apa? Sorry, boleh mula balik? Uh, same on both side. Same of both side. So symmetry, we can see a mirror. Okay, if we put a mirror in the between, okay, in the mirror, it's reflect the same thing. Okay, uh, tak adalah kita tengok mirror, muka kita uh, nampak macam joker ke apa-apa. So the key will be the same. In symmetric crypto system, the key that we use to encrypt and decrypt are the same. And mirror image process lah. Okay, that is symmetric, which means that K1 equal to K2. 
okay which means that the k1 is used for decrypt, uh, in decrypt same with the k2 that you're going to use to decrypt and both of the party agrees with that value however for asymmetric is different okay this is still asymmetry asymmetry however for the asymmetric is different okay the key that going to use for encrypt is different totally not equal the key that going to use to decrypt okay sorry the key that going to use to encrypt is different with the key that going to decrypt okay that's we call asymmetric okay totally different and both of the party agree with this value okay uh, this is the equation here kd kd means key to in, uh, decrypt ke ke is mean key to encrypt okay so to encrypt it we they are using kd to de uh, sorry to encrypt you are using ke and to decrypt you they are using kd okay that is asymmetric <clears throat> Okay, ni tak apa. Bila di sini. <coughs> okay, cipher type. Kita masuk cipher types. Uh, in cryptography, there are two types of cipher. Okay, the first one is a bit stream cipher and the second uh, type is a block stream cipher. Okay, in a very easy uh, words that to be understand, I would like to give an example. Okay. The bit stream is like you transfer it uh, alphabet by alphabet. For example, we have A, B, C. For the bit stream cipher, what we do, we encrypt it one by one. A encrypt and then we encrypt B and then we encrypt C. However, for the block cipher, if we have A, B, C, we encrypt the block of it. A, B, C will be encrypted in uh in the same process okay uh they will not divide into another process that is a block cipher lah. okay which means that bit stream each bit in the plain text is transformed into a cipher bit one by bit at a time however for the block cipher the message is divided into a block and each block of plain text bit is transformed into encrypted block cipher bit using an algorithm and a key Okay, that is different. That is the difference between a bit stream, a bit stream cipher and a block stream, a block cipher. So we move to another topic, which is a classical cryptography. Okay, classical cryptography. Okay, this is uh, we are going to learn a few type of technique in classical cryptography. However, in a cryptograph, classical cryptography, it will divide into type of basic components. The first component will be a substitution and the second component will be transportation. It's totally a different kind of technique, okay? How we would like to understand it in a different, in an easier way. For example, I give an example. You are playing a football. You have a team of a football and you are the manager, okay? In a field, there are player one, player A and player B. Eh, sorry, in the field, there are player A. In a substitution cipher, okay, what should you do? As a manager, you would like to substitute the player A with player B, which means that you replace it, okay? You take out player A and you replace with player B. This is a substitution. For transportation, is mean that in a field, there are player A and player B. Player A is the midfield and player B is the striker. So in a transposition, you transport it, which means that you rearrange back, okay, the role for each of the player. A before this is a midfield, and then you move the role to a... Uh, as uh, the role as a striker okay previously b is a striker you move the role to be a midfield after that so this is transposition okay substitution cipher is a substitution bit character on one block to another character 
Okay, for the transition cipher, or we call another name, permutation. Arrange back and transpose bit or character of the original text. Itu perbezaan antara substitution cipher and a transposition cipher. Setakat ni ada soalan ingin ditanya? Ada soalan? Uh, sir. Yes? Explain sikit lagi boleh tak substitution dengan transposition? Oh, sedih semula eh. Okay, substitution cipher ni. Okay, substitution cipher which mean that we replace. We replace. Okay, seperti contoh dalam Caesar cipher yang saya bagi tadi. A, we're going to replace with another character B. Okay, uh, that is a substitution cipher. However, for a transposition cipher is the change or re-enrichment of the row or the character which mean that in a word they are a and b what they do in the transposition cipher they rearrange back the uh, the row or the character of it maybe a will be b uh, a will be changed as uh, to be a b and b will be changed as a itu adalah transposition okay uh, seperti yang saya kata bagi contoh uh, satu pasukan bola sepak lah a one team you are manager what should you do you would like to substitute so this will be a substitution cipher and then you would like to uh, change the role for the player in the field this will be the transposition okay rearrange back itu saja okay uh, so setakat ni faham boleh eh? Faham. Okay, so we move to the classical cryptography. We still in the uh, classical cryptography. Okay, example of substitution cipher are easy substitution, homophonic substitution, polyalphabetic substitution, and polygram substitution. Okay, an example of columnar uh, transposition cipher is tra columnar transposition, rinse, real fence, and vernum cipher. Don't worry, Sal, don't worry. We are going to learn. Okay each of this kind of substitution after this okay uh, each of it and so okay kita move to the next slide okay still in a uh, substitution cipher uh, in the substitution cipher in substitution cipher there are several uh, technique okay in substitution cipher the first one is a monoalphabetic Okay, sebagai contohnya monoalphabetic adalah Caesar cipher lah. Why we call monoalphabetic? Replace plain text with a cipher text using a single alphabet key. Okay, we get back on the Caesar cipher previously. We know that Caesar cipher apply what? Re uh, play, uh, replace, okay, the alphabet, okay, with another alphabet of places. How many movement they make? Okay, and the key, the movement is two. So each of alphabet, okay, uh, in a Caesar cipher, we will uh, will be replaced with two movement. Okay, this will not be changed. Like each alphabet, contohnya A B C, and we apply Caesar cipher for A B C, and A will be replaced. We saying that the rules is we will uh, the rules dalam Caesar cipher place. Okay, the each of the alphabet, uh, two to the right, which means that A I can move two to the right, B point I can will be moved two to the right, and C will be moved two to the right. That is monoalphabetic. For homo, for me, is different. Okay, we have A B C. Okay, we still using the Caesar cipher, at the point, uh, using the algorithm. For example, A. We apply three movement. B we apply three, two movement. C we apply how many movement? This is homophonic. Each of the alphabet will have different kind of key. Okay, uh, itu adalah homophonic. What is polyalphabetic? Polyalphabetic replace plain text with a cipher text using multiple substitution letter for example okay we have a book 
book is a plain text B and we would like to use a polyalphabetic substitution cipher. Okay, the key that we're going to use for polyalphabetic, uh, we're going to have in a multiple letters. For example, book will be used kite as the key. Macam mana kita nak kata uh, macam tu? Sebab polyalphabetic is a word, a text, a plain text. Okay, will be use a kite as the key to replace it. Okay, polygram, a block or cipher is replaced with another block. Ini panjang sikit lah dalam wording lah. Okay, dalam wording. Dan dia menggunakan uh, contohnya adalah play fair cipher. Dan so kita akan pergi satu ke satu. Apa itu play fair cipher? Apa itu virginia cipher nanti? Okay. And then, kita masuklah dalam scissor cipher. Okay, scissor cipher pun saya dah terangkan. Apa itu scissor cipher? Dan... Hopefully all of you understand what is Caesar cipher. Okay, it proposed by Jesus Caesar lah. Okay, sama ada, okay, dia punya rules tu, kita replace with another alphabet. Okay, maybe uh, it depend on the key. If you would like to move it, uh, three to the right ke, three to the left, two to the left ke, two to the right. It depend on the key. We have in the question, if you find out, you're given a question based on Julius Caesar. Okay, you dah tahu dah. You will know how Julius Caesar technique was conducted, implement. However, you should also must understand what kind of key that we'll be going to use. Okay, in Julius Caesar. Uh, you can know uh, what kind of key. Okay, kalau you... Tak faham, okay? If you don't understand how Julius Caesar work, so it will be a difficult for you to answer this kind of question, okay? Okay. Kalau kita tengok sini, eh, sebab apa saya kata, okay, in Julius Caesar, this is the when we change it, okay? Because classical uh, Julius Caesar, uh, Gilles uh, cipher, uh, Caesar cipher, sorry, Caesar cipher is a classical cryptography and then it falls in the substitution cipher and then uh, this also we call a manual calculation. However, we can convert it a mathematical, okay? Bila Karl Kashkandi uh, came up with uh, a formula how to decrypt, to break the code, it found out what, okay? They are using the character, the movement is 26. If you look here. Okay, kita mutkan dengan 26. Okay, this is the equation in G, uh, Caesar cipher. Okay, if you see here, cipher text equal to what? E, encryption. By using K, we encrypt the plain text. Okay, and we change it. P, the plain text, plus the key mod by 26. Which means that we have, we we have the plain text, we know the key, we mod it by twenty six, and then we call it okay the encryption, okay because of what? Contohnya lah, okay the plain text dalam alphabet kata A, A is equal to zero, plus the key, key is two, okay zero plus two is two, mod by twenty six. So if we mod by twenty six, mod is we mean that the the last uh, the last number the last uh, baki dalam bahasa Inggeris apa saya lah. Balance. Yeah, the last balance. Okay, yeah. the mod. If we uh, mod it by twenty six, we mean that uh, if you get the balance of binding the mod, okay, twenty uh, two uh, divide by twenty six. Okay, mod 26, you get 2 as the balance, right? So, in English alphabet, 2 is equal to what? Because in alphabet, in English, okay, A, B, C, 26. However, in uh, represent the value of each alphabet is 0 to 25. So, 2 is equal to what? If we say that... A is 0, B is 1, C is 2. So, 2 is C. 
This is how you manual calculation using the Caesar cipher. Use this mathematical equation. Okay, itulah sebab mudah lah. Okay, tapi ada yang nak guna calculator boleh juga nanti. Okay, you are allowed to use calculator. If you given this calculation, uh, this equation to find out okay the 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 plain text or the cipher text you can use it the calculator and it's how okay dan saya rasa kita stop sini dahulu okay tomorrow we are going to continue on the Caesar cipher okay we're going to do some exercise to make sure that you really understand and you really know how to implement to apply this kind of uh, algorithm Okay, dan kelas kita, tomorrow class will start at 8.30, also in online mode. Boleh ya? Boleh. Okay. Okay, I think that's all for today. I would like to thank to all of you who attend our uh, our class today. And if you have anything to ask regarding your lab assignment or the project, you may ask in the group or you can uh, message me directly. Okay. And hope to see you again, okay, tomorrow, okay, in the morning at 8.30 in uh, in the morning, okay, in online. So, using the same, uh, same link, okay. See you, Assalamualaikum, and have a nice day, uh, rest of the day today. Sir, sir. Yes. I uh, think kalau uh, for group project tu, mm -hmm. Uh, kalau group saya campur dengan section 2A boleh ke? Oh, aduh, saya lupa pula nak pesan. Uh, group project boleh. Tak ada masalah. Dan so saya akan remind balik okay, tentang group okay, ni. Okay. Saya lupa nak mention you boleh campur untuk group. Uh, okay, okay. Tapi bagi saya lebih mudah dalam section yang sama. Uh, sebab nanti kan you nak pergi what, nak pergi guna lab ke nak siapkan lebih mudah lah. Mm -hmm. Tapi boleh dia campur. Depend how you would like to manage your play group nanti. Okay? Okay. okay. okay Thank you, sir. Saya, nanti saya akan remind balik esok lah. Okay, terima kasih kerana soalan tanya soalan tu. Okay, Assalamualaikum. Dan jumpa lagi esok eh. Okay, see you tomorrow uh, for our lecture session. Okay, I will continue my lecture on chapter 3 tomorrow. Thank you, sir. You're Thank welcome. you, sir. Sama-sama. You're welcome.
Okay, Assalamualaikum and a very good morning to everyone. Good morning, Dr. Okay. Okay, Alhamdulillah. Okay, we meet again today for this week for the lecture session. So yesterday we already gone through with the lab session. However, I use the time in the lab session to deliver a lecture, okay, on the chapter three. And I, and I think for both of the session, okay, I stop at the Caesar cipher, okay. Today, uh, I would like to continue on my lecture, okay, we, on the chapter three, okay. Hopefully, we could finish, okay, uh, on the on this chapter for the part one okay by end of this uh by end of 10 hopefully we could finish okay until the transposition cipher and hope uh what i would like to advise you okay for all of you hopefully in the future okay because okay right now there are only 38 participants okay i am really sad because this is an online class however we are still out of number of the student still waiting for the others to join okay and i don't think we have any difficulty because i've already uh remind regarding the class yesterday okay so because i when i give a lecture okay if someone would like to join the class it will disturb okay a little bit uh, our i mean that the when i'm delivering the lecture okay it will disturb because i have to admit okay you to enter to the class okay that's all right so i think uh to, i would like to continue with the lecture right now so i will share the slide to you Hmm. So macam mana ni? Hari ni semua berada di rumah ke? Ataupun ada yang masih berada di asrama? Tak balik lagi? Oh di asrama. Okey. Mungkin yang ada dekat asrama tak join ni sebab tak bangun lagi kot. Terlajak tidur kan? Di awal pagi kan? Okey sebab ke kelas online. Okey. Never mind. Okay, I would like to continue on the Caesar cipher. If you look at this slide, okay. Okay, as I have mentioned uh, in the yesterday class, a Caesar cipher is one of the classical uh, cipher that we're going to learn for this semester. And Caesar cipher, it falls under the type of substitution cipher. And also, Caesar cipher come from a mono alphabetic uh, uh, i mean mono alphabetic cipher okay 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 for Caesar cipher what i have already explained to you we will have to move each of alphabet in the Caesar cipher, the plain text in the Caesar cipher, to another places, which means that we have to sub. Uh, for example, if we have the plain text is A, and the key that we're going to use, okay, for the uh, that type of algorithm is three, which means uh, three to the right, which means that we move the alphabet A to the movement will be three to the right it will be substitute with the or replace with another character which are uh, the output will be uh, d okay okay so okay yes let's see okay then caesar cipher actually in the caesar cipher there is a multi, uh, mathematic equation that we can use, okay, to encrypt and decrypt as uh, as in the slide, okay. This is the equation for Caesar cipher, okay. Uh, although we have a manual technique to decrypt and encrypt it, however, we can, uh, because we already in a modern era, uh, modern era, so the 
the people that are crypto analysts uh, have converted, which means that they would like to do some uh, in a mathematical equation. So this is the equation for CZ cipher. If you see here, the first uh, equation here, C is equal to uh, cipher, which means that this is the equation to encrypt the uh, the plain text. So to get the plain text, okay, encryption, K is the key and P is the plain text. It's equal to P plus K, which means that the plain text, the value of the new, uh, the value of the numeric plus with K with the key and mod to 26. Why we said mod to 26? Because in English alphabet, there are 26 character. So after that, we will get, okay, the, uh, I mean that the, the, the value of the output for the cipher, okay? This also, uh, the second equation is for uh, to get the plain text back again, which means that we use it to decrypt, okay? So I would like to, uh, I will give you five minutes. How, how about you try to break the cipher text? And I would like to know what the answer for the cipher text, okay? Kalau ada yang dah, dah buat dah, this type of hypertext. Okay, saya bagi masa lima minit, okay, to break this hypertext. Security. Okay, so, so how about the, the, the key? How many movement? Three to the right. Okay, so, if uh, one of your friend already get the answer, so to break the ciphertext, to decrypt it, you have to move three to the right, okay? Two, uh, three, three places to the right. So the answer for the ciphertext is security, okay? There, uh, as I mentioned before, okay, uh, if you will, uh, see the cipher is very easy to break, okay? Although, you don't uh, you didn't have any clue okay uh what is the i mean that what is the uh answer for the cipher text what should, you can do you just move and write okay just continue okay the v okay the the alphabet until the z and then until you uh for the 26th time which means that in the, uh, in the mode, because the in elf English alphabet, there are 26 alphabet, so you can write it, okay? Uh, move one places by one places in a uh, 26 step. In the middle of it, reading the 26 step, you will find, okay, the plain text of the uh, Caesar cipher. Okay, it's a very easy one. So in the final exam, if you don't have any clue, okay, you don't know, okay, whether that you would like to move it to the left or to the right, okay, you will find the answer, okay, in the 26th step, okay, in the middle of 26th step, there is a, uh, a plain text, okay, between it. So it's a very simple for Caesar cipher, okay, tak apa, nanti kita akan, uh, in the next class, we are going to do some exercise regarding it. Okay, don't worry about it. So, for the Caesar cipher, okay, the major uh, weaknesses of Caesar cipher is predictable. Lah. I mean that uh, you can, because we have a 26 movement of it, right? So, uh, to make it difficult, okay, Caesar cipher can be uh, upgraded or enhanced, okay, from monoalphabetic to homophonic alphabetic, okay? So what do you mean by homophonic? Uh, homophonic substitution cipher, which means that previously a monoalphabetic, which means uh, each of the character 
will uh, each of the character we're going to uh, each of the character for that word or the plain text we're going to have the same key mono alphabetic however for the homophonic uh, alphabetic substitution cipher each of the alphabet in the plain text going to have a different key which means that for example the plain text is crucial okay for example the plain text is crucial which means that we have uh, we would like to encrypt okay this plain text to cipher text using a caesar cipher or mono uh, uh, by using a homophonic if you would like to use the homophonic technique but uh, implement it with the Caesar cipher, each of the character, the alphabet, we're going to have a different key. Okay, that is homophonic, which means that C, the key is three. R, the key may be five. U, the key will be uh, six. C, the key will be one. I, maybe three. And then, so move on until the end of the plain text. Okay, this will make okay Caesar cipher more difficulty. However, okay, however, uh, the algorithm uh, the algorithm is easily to be break. Okay, although uh, it will take a lot more time to break it, but the user or the cryptanalyst know the type of algorithm. Okay, if you uh, if we combine the twenty six character in the english we can factorial it 26 uh, factorial so we'll uh, to break the code it will take very huge number and time however what i'm saying before the type of the cc cipher is easily okay it's easy to break although it will take a lot of time okay so that is is a cipher here now we have a total of 26 factorial four time 1026 key okay this is ex uh, extremely hard to crack okay because it will take a lot of time however this type of algorithm already known by the human and they can use the to break it okay caesar cipher language redundancy and uh, cryptanalysis okay in english word actually there is also a type of cipher that we can learn from the english that we know that uh, some of the word uh, are frequently being used in english text okay the normal or the most frequencies of uh, letter that uh, human use in english word english alphabet is e right okay so by using this most common word okay we can also encrypt and decrypt what type of this uh, uh we also can decrypt what of the cyber text that would uh i mean that the the cyber text that would be delivered by the sender okay for example if you can see here okay this is the table a figure that showing that okay uh from letter a to letter z by in the English letter frequencies is uh, refer to the English letter frequency. If you see here, the letter of the alphabet E is the most frequently used, okay, in the English word, okay. It's 12 minute within a, a single of a word, the percentage of it is 12.702, it's really high. So, okay. Key concept, monoalphabetic substitution cipher do not change relative letter frequencies. Okay, this type of frequencies of the letter was discovered by the Arabian scientists in the 9th century. Okay, by calculating the letter frequency for ciphertext, compare counts plot again the values. Okay, for the monoalphabetic must identify each other table of common or double triple letter help. Okay, for example, of the cryptanalyst. Okay, we, this is a type of cryptanalyst. We do not know what kind of uh, algorithm we're going to use. However, uh, we would like to break it, okay, by using the English frequency of the word, okay? So, this is the given ciphertext, 
Okay, we know that the most frequently word uh, that used is e, uh, in the English uh, text is E. So, we will count the frequency of the ciphertext. Okay, kita kena count lah. Okay, contohnya, dalam uh, in this ciphertext, we have to find, okay, what is the most uh, alphabet that used in this ciphertext? We have to count for that for the alphabet U. How many, uh, how many uh, the numbers of U has been used in this ciphertext for each of the alphabet in here? And then we have to make a table and give the number of each of the uh, the character. Okay, by doing this, we we uh, we will know. Okay, for example, in this. Uh, in this ciphertext, okay, we can say that the highest frequency alphabet that using in the ciphertext is <coughs> is uh, is P. So, in an English frequency, okay, base table, the most English word that use in the English is E. So, we can say that P is equal to E. So, by guessing P and Z, okay, uh, are E and T because the second highest, uh, <coughs> <coughs> sorry, oh. <coughs> sorry, guess P and Z are E and T, which means that uh p is the most frequency used uh ciphertext in this uh, uh sorry p is the most care the most used character in this ciphertext and then it uh it followed by z okay by relate it we can guess it's z w is t h and hence z w p is the Okay, by using this table, okay, we can have the uh, plain text. Okay, we'll try an error and finally this is the uh, plain text for this cipher text. Okay, you can try it lah, because this is also one of the cryptanalysts, a brute force attack by using the hackers uh, to break the code. Okay, because maybe they did not know what what kind of algorithm that you're going to use but this is also one of the way okay to break the code okay to find what is exactly the exactly message that's signed by the sender to the recipient in a cipher text okay so we move to the poly substitution cipher okay Kita dah belajar scissor cipher, scissor cipher mudah sahaja. Kita akan move to the polygram substitution cipher. Rather than replacing one plain text alphabet with one cipher text alphabet at a time, a block of alphabet is replaced with another block. That is a polygram. Okay, kalau scissor cipher, I have mentioned before, scissor cipher, we have to replace one alphabet with another alphabet. But for the polygram, Okay, we have to uh, replace it block by block. Okay, it is done by dividing a plain text into a group of alphabet. This group can be two alphabet or more than that. Okay, that is a polygram substitution cipher. For example, okay, uh, in a Caesar cipher, we take uh, the example, uh, the word is done. Okay, done. Okay, this, for example, the plain text is done here. Okay, semua nampak eh, saya tunjuk kepada keadaan ni. Okay, in the Apa? cipher, we have to replace one alphabet with another one alphabet. That is homophonic. For the, uh, sorry, for the monoalphabetic. For the homophonic, okay, we can, what we can do, each of the alphabet, we're going to have a different kind of key. That is homophonic. But for the polygram substitution cipher, it's different. We have to break it in a block by block. Okay, if you see here, the group can be two alphabet or more than that. 
which means that if we're saying that we would like the group will be in two, we have to divide the down into two group, which means that D will be partnered with O and N will partner with E. Okay, that is in partner of two. If the partner is three, so D will partner with O and N, so E will be left alone. However, we can't left it alone. Okay, we have add some of a, a filler over there, X and Y. Okay, that we are uh, going to learn in the next slide after this. This is a polygram succession cipher. Okay, which means that the group can be two alphabet or more than that. Okay, example that we're going to learn in this chapter is a Playfair cipher that use or implement the polygram succession cipher. Okay. Okay, what is a Playfair cipher? Okay, play safe cipher is uh, one of the example of the uh, polygram substitution cipher. It was invented by the Charles Wigton in 19, 1854. However, okay, this kind of cipher was named uh, after his friend, is a Baron Playfair. I do not know what is the relationship between both of these people. However, what I am read based on the uh, based on the reference and Google it, uh, both of them are close friend, and then Charles Whitstone uh, invented this kind of substitution cipher, and Baron Playfair is the one who make this kind of cipher popular. That's why, okay, maybe Charles Whitstone uh, invented a polygram substitution cipher. And then the Baron Playfair uh, popular this kind of uh, cipher. That's why this technique was named after him. Okay, what is a Playfair cipher? In a Playfair cipher, okay, the first thing that you must to know Okay, kita kena ambil uh, perhatian. Eh? Please pay attention because uh, if you do not understand how to uh, the rules and how to decrypt and encrypt it, you will uh, having an issue. Okay, when you are answering in the in the final exam or in the midterm test. So the Playfair cipher algorithm is based on the five time matrix. Okay, saya besar kalau ini. Okay, this is the matrix. If you if you look here, okay, this is the matrix of five times five, which means that we have twenty five box in here. We know that in English alphabet there are twenty six alphabet. So there is a one box that will be shared by two alphabet. Usually, it will be the I and J because I and J is the in the middle of the alphabet uh, A until Z. Okay, that's why they share in the same box. How we would like to write in this metric five times five? Okay, in a Playfair cipher, there are also five rules to obey. Okay, are the lima rules that you can obey? Dan you kena ikut. Kalau you tak follow, you akan uh, menghadapi masalah. Ya. You're going to face a problem with this kind of cipher. Okay. So the first thing in a Playfair cipher, there is a metric five times five, and there also a what a five rule that you have to obey. So example uh, for the Playfair cipher that we're going to learn today. Okay. Given a key ledang. And the plain text is data network security. Okay, by using and implement the Playfair cipher, we would like to find okay the cipher text for this plain text. So the first thing we have to make uh, a metric five times five first. Okay, this is the box, and then we know the key that going to use here is lay down. So what we should do the first thing for the box, we have to fill okay the key in each of the box here okay l e d a n g lay down okay or oh, for uh <coughs> okay the first thing we have to key in the key okay for example the key is not lay down book 
Uh, for example, another example, beside ledang, okay, we can, uh, another key, if they give another key is, for example, UMP. So, we have to fill, okay, the key first, okay, in this box, UMP. So, for this uh, example, the key is ledang. So, L-E-D-A-N-G will be the first uh, words that we're going to fill in this matrix. So, after you have filled the, the, the key in this uh, matrix, you have to fill all the, uh, I mean, the, the rest of alphabet of uh, English word in this box, okay? The word must not be repeated, which means that, okay, uh, A already be in the key, so it will not be uh, repeat again. So, we continue with B, C. Okay, D already been used as a key, so we continue with E. However, E also already been a key, so we continue with F. And H, I, J, K, M, O, P, Q, until Z. Okay, please make sure all of the English alphabet, 20 English alphabet was filled, uh, filled in these boxes or the metric five times five and i will share with j in one box okay the rules is you have first first the rule the first rule to fill in the, in this box you have to fill it with the key first understand eh? what yeah okay after that I'm fine. comes with the five rules lah. are the five rules you have to obey okay what should you do the first rule you have to divide okay the plain text into two alphabet okay you have to divide the plain text in a group of two alphabet that should you do okay uh, we have the plain text data and network security so we have to divide the uh, plain text in a group of two d will be partner with a t will partner with a n will partner with e T will partner with W, O will partner with R, K with S, E with C, U with R, I with T. And in the plain text is an odd number. So why don't have any partner? If you find this kind of situation, what going to happen? You have to add a filler here. A filler will be an X. So you have to end, uh, add x here so the partner for y will be x okay kalau lah uh, the number of the plain text is odd okay if the number of the plain text is odd you have to add a filler and the filler will be x okay and for the second rule if a pair is a repeated letter insert a filler like x kita kena insert a filler x juga kalau repeated letter Contohnya lah kan. Contohnya, kita ada uh, plain text book B-O-O-K. Book. Okay. Sorry, bukan book eh. Sorry eh. Minta maaf. Bukan book. Book is uh, tu. Apa dia? Saya minta. Uh, jap, jap, jap. Saya tengok jap. Uh, PSS5. Okay, for example, okay, the plain text is letter here. The plain text is letter. We have to divide in a group of two. L will partner with E. T will partner with T. And E will partner with R. It's obey for the first rule. However, if we come to the second rule, it's saying that if a pair is a repeated letter, T with T is a repeated letter. So, what we have to do, we have to divide, okay, ataupun we have to uh, divide the letter. So, L will partner with E, T, we will going to add a filler and X, okay? T will partner with X and then T again will partner with E and then R is left alone. So, what we do, it's going to be an odd number. So, we have to add another filler X also here. So, the outcome 
when we divide these uh, plain text will be L E T X T E and N R X. Okay, that is the group of the plain text they're going to be in Crip. Okay, if the letter are repeated, please remember, eh? Kalau lah in the odd, we have to add a filler. If the letter is uh, repeated, we also have to add the filler. However, the usually uh, mistake that student uh, going to make is they partner like this. L with partner with E, T with partner with X, and then T partner juga dengan X. It's wrong. Okay, itu adalah cara pembahagian divide the letter in a wrong way. What should you do? L with partner with E, T with partner with X, T will be partner with E and R will be partner with X. Okay, please remember regarding that. Okay, if both letters fall in same row, replace each with a letter to the right. Okay, kita dah masuk. For the third rule, we are going to try to encrypt it. Okay, this is the next rule, which means that contohnya lah. If the letter fall in the same row, we take D and A. Okay, D and A is a partner that falls in the same row. Okay, betul kan? D and A. So, based on this rule, it's saying that replace each of the letter to the right. So, Macam mana kita nak replacekan dia? Which mean that D will replace with A and A will be replaced with N. So for the cipher text for D and A will be A and N. That is the third rule. Okay. Okay, the next rule, if the letter falls in the same row. Okay, the next or the fourth rule will be if the letter falls in the same row. Eh, sorry, not fall in the same row, falls in the same column. Okay, if the letter falls in the same column, for example, uh, previously we used the example D and A. And right now we are going to use the next uh, partner, T and A. Okay, T and A falls in the same column. Okay, the rules is saying that if it falls in the same column, you have to replace it with the letter below it, which means that T and A is a partner. So, T will be replaced with Y and A will be replaced with F. So, the the, the cipher text for uh, partner T and A is Y and F. Okay? That is the rules for number four. And the next or the fifth rule for play text, if the partner, okay, if the partner or the group falls in, sorry, ini kena tengok sikit. Otherwise, each letter, okay. Each letter is replaced by the letter in the same row and column of the letter of the pair. Okay, ini line sedikit lah. Kalau lah, if. Kalau lah, if the partner was not in the same row and same column. For example, we take here, here, here is an E, T, W. Okay. okay, and T, W. T, W is a partner, T and W. Okay, T and W was not in the same row and was not also in the same column. How you would like to encrypt it? Okay, what we should do, T will be replaced with R and W will be replaced with why? That is the fifth row. Okay? Which means that the letter in the row will replace the letter that uh, uh, in the row of, in the column of W. And the letter of uh, W will be replaced with the letter in the column of T below it. So, it must be in the box lah. Paling mudah, the, it will be in the box. Okay? Uh, so, kena ingat lah yang tu. That is the fifth row. So, kita pergilah. Okay, we try to break this lah. Okay. This is the example lah. Okay. 
So D, data network security. And the last one is FY. And this is the metric five times five. And this is the, the group of the letter. We divide it into two alphabet. And this is the ciphertext of it. Okay, D and A. If you look here, D and A, the answer is A N. T and A is Y F. Okay, Y F. N E, N E, N and E. So N will be replaced with L and E will be replaced with D. Okay, T W, T and W, R Y. Okay, O R. Okay, we let's find O R. O R. So this is uh, based on the fifth rule. So o, R will, o will be replaced with K and R will be replaced with T. And so we move on until the end of the, uh, I mean at the end of the group, Y, X. So if we, we look here, Y and X, okay, Y and X, Y will be replaced with Z and X will be replaced with Y. However, contohnya lah, okay, contohnya. Katakanlah, okay, if the partner is, uh, <coughs> kalau lah the partner is G and I. So, what will be the ciphertext for it? Someone? If the partner is G and I. I Q. IQ, okay. Another one? Betul, IQ, G and I. For this kind of partner or group, we can have two uh, answer. Okay. Uh, the, the answer given by your friend, IQ is, uh, I mean, that is right. Another also answer is JQ. Because of what? I and J, okay, they are sharing in the same boxes so you can choose it can be either iq or jq okay uh, then jangan you partner pula dengan orang lain eh uh -huh. maknanya you stick to the rules i we going to have a partner with j okay tak boleh dapat dengan orang lain okay uh, janganlah you letak partner j dengan k pula nanti okay sila remind tersebutlah this is the rule for the play fair cipher okay jangan ubah okay Okay, that is a Playfair cipher. So, do you understand regarding a Playfair cipher? Understand. Boleh ya? Eh? Tak ada masalah ya? Eh? So, uh, kita move to the next punya. Uh... <coughs> okay, sebelum tu. <coughs> okay, itu adalah untuk encrypt. Okay, how about we would like to decrypt uh, a cipher text, okay, for the play fest in a using play fest cipher. Okay, do you, uh, do one of you could explain how to decrypt it by using the same example here. Okay, they are using the same key, ledang. They are using the same boxes here. However, we are only given, okay, in the question, you are given the key ledang. And then you write in the box like here. Okay, this is the metric that you write. You fill all the English alphabet in this box. However, you are not given the plain text here. Okay, there is no plain text, data and your security. You are only given... A, N, Y, F, L, D, R, Y, K, T, M, R, D, B, Q, S, O, Q, and Z, Y. How you would like to get the plain text? By using the plain fair cipher. Reverse can just process too. Reverse can process. That's true. So how about the rule? Is going to be the same process or not? Do we have to change the rule? Yes. Yes, we have to change the rule. 
Okay, for the Playfair cipher, we have to change the rule for decryption. We get the ciphertext, we divide it into a group, two, okay, A, we partner with N, Y, we partner with F, L, D, R, Y, K, T, M, R, B, B, Q, S, O, Q, and Z, Y. This will be their partner, okay? We remember it, okay? If the, uh, the group, Okay, the alphabet in this group falls in the same uh, row, so it will be replaced on the right of it, right? So for the decrypt, you have to reverse it on the left of it. Okay, for example, A and N. A and N. So in the encryption, we have to move to the right. However, for the decryption, we have to move to the left. So N will replace with A, and A will be replaced with D. So this is the answer. That is for the uh, group that falls in the same row. How about the, uh, the group that falls in the same column? Okay, in the encryption for the ciphertext, uh, for the Caesar, for the Flayfair cipher, it's mentioned that if the group falls in the same column, it will be, will be uh, replaced with the letter below it. For decryption, you have to replace it a letter above it. Okay? So, for example, T and A here. T and A. So, to encrypt or to decrypt this uh, ciphertext, T will be replaced with what? Uh, sorry, why will be the partner is YF. Okay, why will be replaced a letter above it, T. And then F will be replaced a letter above it is A. Okay, that is how we do the reverse. However, for the fifth rules, it maintains the same thing. Okay, because of what? Kalau kita tengok sini. Okay, the letter will be an E, not T, W, right? Okay, T, W. So, how we would like to decrypt it? It still remain on the R and Y. Okay, the rule is still same. For the fifth rule, is still same. However, for the third and the second rule, is different, is reverse. That is how we decrypt it to get the plain text again. Faham ya? Beres ya? Boleh? Boleh. Boleh, okay. Okay, we move to the next uh, uh, next <coughs> next cipher is a polyalphabetic substitution cipher. One of the examples that we're going to learn in a polyalphabetic cipher is a visionary cipher. Okay, what is visionary cipher? Okay, Virginia cipher is created by the Blaise de Virginia in the 16th century. Okay, by using this cipher scheme, one rule set of monoalphabetic substitution that is built from 26 Caesar cipher with a value starting from 0 to 25 used with a one value of key. Okay, Caesar cipher is based on monoalphabetic. However, it's a different type of scheme. Okay, Caesar cipher falls on the polyalphabetic uh, substitution cipher. Okay, we're still using the same example, data and security, and the key is LEDA. Macam mana kita nak implement or apply VDN cipher menggunakan uh, in this uh, type of algorithm? Okay, kita tinggalkan ini dulu. This is the manual how you like to uh, to decrypt or encrypt a Caesar sign. this box. Okay. Selalunya dalam final exam akan dibekalkan lah. Kalau tak ada, you kena buat sendiri lah. 
Okay. However, for the Vision Cipher, it's very simple. Okay. Apa yang kena buat, uh, what should you do in Vision Cipher? Okay. Contohnya. This is data network security and the ledang is the key. In the video cipher, the key will be repeat until the end of the plain text. Okay, the key will be repeated until the end of the plain text, which means that data network security. Okay, a ledang will be uh, put under uh, ledang. L will be put under D, E will be put under A, D will be put under T, A will be put under A, N will be put under N, and G will be put under alphabet E. So, and then ledang will be repeated again. Okay? L, E, D, A, N, G. And then L, E, D, A, N, G. And then the last will be Y will partner with L. So, the letter will be repeated until the end of the plain text here. Okay, that will uh, is a Virginia cipher. It's a polyalphabetic, which means that the key will be repeated and used to in, as a, to encrypt or decrypt this kind of uh, algorithm or the plain text here. Okay, so how we would like to get the cipher text for D by using the key of L here. So, based on this table, okay, here, uh, ini adalah example of data and security lah. Kalau kita tengok sini, data network security and this is the key here and the key ledang is repeated until the end of the plain text here. Okay, so, D will be using L as a key to get the cipher text. If you see here, O is the answer or the cipher text for uh, this, uh, I mean, uh, this, this two uh, alphabet, okay? Based on this table, what we can do, we're seeing that the key is L. So, the key is L here. This is the, we move it to the L and the plain text is D. What we can do, we move it until we find the point that both of the alphabet are see each other okay d we move to here until it c at l okay so when the both of the column and row meet so the alphabet that meet here is o so this is the cipher text by using the business cipher it's very simple this is how we do in manual uh, technique. However, there is a calculation also on the Virginia cipher. I will explain to you after this. Okay. Dalam Virginia, ini adalah cara yang manual lah. Semua faham eh? So, we take another example. So, A and E. So, A will be the key and E will be the blank text. So, E will be the cipher text for Virginia cipher. Boleh ya? Faham ya? So, we decrypt it. Okay, each of the alphabet with the key that used by the, uh, that given in the question. So, the key will be laid down. It will be repeated until the end of the uh, plain text. So, this will be your cipher text. Uh. Okay, you will get this uh, cipher text, okay, based on this table. Okay, boleh ya? Tak ada masalah, eh? boleh? Boleh. Okay. So, uh, semua boleh-boleh setakat ni. Tak apa, nanti saya bagi soalan tak boleh jawab nanti. Okay, dan kita move to another punya solution. How you would like to encrypt or de uh, decrypt by using a mathematic calculation. Okay, ini yang selalu keluar dalam final exam or midterm test. Okay, jarang soalan akan menggunakan this kind of solution. Ini yang menggunakan this table. Okay, most of the question will come based on this solution for Virginia cipher by using a mathematic calculation equation. So, in a Virginia cipher, okay, the, I mean that the, <coughs> sorry, uh, the example I'm using here is uh, we are discovered, we are discovered, 
save yourself, which means that we are discovered, save yourself. And then the key that you're going to use is uh, deceptive, okay? Which means that the key deceptive will be repeated until the end of the plain text, okay? So D will part, we're going to have a partner with W, okay? W will be the key, sorry, sorry, no. W uh, going to have D as the key to encrypt it, okay? W is the plain text and D is the key to encrypt the alphabet of W. So, by using the mathematical calculation, we know that the number alphabet in English is 26. However, the value, the numeric value for each of the alphabet is starting from 0 to 25. Okay? Please remember the starting of the numeric of alphabet is starting from 0 to 25. So, we can say that A is equal to 0 and the last alphabet in English is Z. Z is equal to 25, okay? So based on this example also, okay, we can see that the key D, D is <coughs> the numeric value <coughs> in alphabet, English alphabet of D will be three, right? A, B, A, B, C, D, zero, one, two, three, okay? And the numeric value for alphabet W will be 22. So what we do, we add this number. Okay, we will get the total of this number 25. What we do next, to get the ciphertext, we mode it by 26. <coughs> okay, mode it by 26. The output will be 25. <coughs> so we know that the ciphertext uh, for the numeric value of 25 is Z. That is in the mathematic calculation. <coughs> okay, for the next move. Okay, E and E. E, the numeric value is 4. <coughs> the plain text also is E. Numeric value is 4. And then we add this number is equal to 8. Okay, 8 mod by 26, the output will be 8. So, based on the table, the numeric value, the numeric value is 8 is 4 for i. Okay, that is how we do in the mathematic calculation. Harap faham lah. Dan kita, you uh, will continue until the end of the uh, plain text. You will get all the answer here for the ciphertext. Boleh ya? Eh? Boleh? Hari ni kita belajar teori dulu. Okay, sepatutnya kena buat online uh, kelas. Uh, sorry, kena buat ni apa? Uh, latihan. Tapi, however, because this is an online class, it's going to be a lecture only on the theory. Hopefully, you will understand how to uh, encrypt it by using the mathematic calculation. Okay, kita pergi ke yang sukar sedikit lah. How we would like to decrypt? Okay, based on the encryption, how you would like to decrypt the visionary cipher? The, the cipher text by using the visionary cipher. Macam mana? Any idea? Class, macam mana? Anyone? Based on this vision as ever, how you would like to decrypt the plain text? Macam mana kita nak decrypt? Tadi, uh, I already explained to you how you would like to encrypt it by using a mathematical calculation. You just add the number here. This number, right? Yeah. Tiga... Uh, 3 will add with 22, we got the total of 25. However, to decrypt it, how? Can anyone 
Ciphertext minus the key. Sorry? The mm, ciphertext? Yes. Minus the key. Minus the key, yes. Okay, thank you, your friend uh, who gave the answer. We just reverse it also. The ciphertext will minus with the key. Okay, we got the total number. Okay, for example, the ciphertext. Okay, the numeric value for Z is 25. Okay, and then we know that the key uh, going to use that uh, is D. So D, the numeric value is 3. We just minus it. We get 22. Okay, we got 22. So based on this numeric value, we will get to know what is the plain text for it. Okay, so the numeric value for alpha, uh, the alphabet, okay, that equal to the numeric value 22 will be W. However, okay, however, macam mana if, okay, the number, okay, the number, kita ambil contoh lah, mana ya, sini yang, okay, however, what if, oh, tak ada contoh sini Okay, here. However, what if the number of ciphertext, okay, is lower than the key, less than the key? What happened? What we should do? For example, here. 13 is the numeric value for the ciphertext and we know the key is 21. So how we would like to implement the decryption process for it? Macam mana kita nak implement? Plus 26 to the ciphertext. Yes. Okay, the first thing you should do if you find the ciphertext numeric value is less to the key, what should you do? You have to add the value of ciphertext with 26 first. 13, add with uh, 26, and then you minus it back with 21. You will get the answer, the numeric value 18. Okay, this is used for a numeric, uh, a numeric value for the ciphertext less than the numeric value for the key. Please remember regarding it. Eh? Uh, okay, tolong ingat. Okay, you can add the flow. You have to add the number with the 26. You get the total and then you minus with the numeric value for the key is 21. So you will get 18. Okay, the numeric value for plain text. Kalau tak guna mathematic calculation, is simple. Okay, because of what? We have the table. Uh, table mudah aja. Kan? What is the, uh, where they meet each other, the column and the row that uh, meet each other. Okay, the point that they meet each other. So that it will be the answer. It's very simple. However, if the question asks you, to solve it using a mathematical calculation, this will be the answer, how to do it. Okay? Boleh ya? So, that will be the business cipher lah. Okay? Okay. And then kita move to the transposition cipher. We would like to move to the transposition cipher. So, kita dah belajar dah, transposition cipher. Uh, there are few type of transposition cipher we already learned, which is Caesar cipher, Playfair cipher, and Virginia cipher. Okay, these three type of uh, cipher, you sh uh, should know how to use the algorithm to encrypt and decrypt it. Boleh ya? Okay, dalam uh, classical cryptography yang kita belajar, that we're going to learn in this chapter, okay, uh, there are two type of, uh, uh, there are two type of cipher, which is substitution and transposition. 
we already learned uh, the types uh, of substitution cipher, which is a Playfair, which are Playfair, Virginia, and uh, Caesar cipher. And right now, we move uh, to another type of a cipher, which in a classical cipher is a transposition cipher. Okay. In yesterday, I already explained to you what is a transposition cipher. Okay. The difference between a transposition and substitution cipher, transposition, which means that you are rearranged, okay, the coordinate, and then the role of the plain text. Compare with the substitution, you replace it with another, okay, uh, another words, another alphabet, or another role. That is a substitution. Okay, usually for the transposition cipher, it's going to use a mapping with a geometric diagram or matrix. Okay, in a transposition cipher, there will be two steps that you have to follow. Okay, untuk transposition ada dua. The first step is you have to rearrange in a desired form. Okay, that is the process to what? To rearrange the writing process we call it the writing process okay the first step is the writing process you must to know how to write it the plain text or the uh or the cipher text the next is the reading process how you would like to read it to get the cipher text and to get the um i'm <coughs> sorry to get the to get the cipher text and to get the plain text called transposition cipher. Okay, so for the transposition cipher, it based on a metric. Okay, the first type of transposition cipher that we're going to learn is a real friend technique. It's very simple because it based on the geometry. Okay, the real friend cipher is an example of transposition cipher. It use a simple geometric form as below. Macam biasa lah, pagar kan? Okay, kalau pagar, dia macam mana? Okay, this is look like pagar lah. Okay, okay, real fan cipher like here. Uh. Okay, kalau tengok sini boleh nampak kan? Pergerakan mouse. Okay, the movement of the mouse. This is the real fan cipher. Based on this example, okay, defend the east wall with the key is 2. If you are given a question, okay, and the key, and uh, if you're given a question and you have to apply real fence technique, okay, to encrypt or decrypt a message, okay, and you are given a key. For example, here, the key is two. So, the level of the fence is only two. Okay, you, if you see here, the number of the level, one and two. If the key is three, which means that the level of the fence is 3. Okay, the level of the fence will be 3. So, in a, a transposition cipher, there are three, two type of process that you have to follow. The first one is writing and the second one is reading. Okay, first, after, this is an example, defend the is wall by using the key is 2. So the level that going to have for the this kind of transposition cipher, real fan cipher, is only 2. So the first step, we have to write it. How to write it? Defend the is wall. So we put D in the first of the column here. Okay? D, and then we move E here, and then we put F here. And then we just continue, okay, the movement of geometry until the end of the plain text. Okay, until the end of the plain text. Here. Okay, what? D, E, F, E, N, D, T, H, E, E, A, S, T, W, A, L, L. So this is how we write it. So how the process we read it? We have to read it based on the row. Okay, we read the first row first. 
D F N T E A T A L. See here, this is the ciphertext. D F N T E A T A L. This is the ciphertext for the first row, and then this will be the ciphertext for the second row. E E D H E S W L. Okay, clear. Really? Clear? Okay, clear. So this is the answer for this example, defend the east wall. This is, will be the ciphertext. However, macam mana kita nak decrypt? How we would like to decrypt? Memang reverse, tetapi teknik dia macam mana? Contohnya, kita tak tahu. You, uh, all of the student was not given lah ini. Hanya you will be given a ciphertext here. Okay, you will be given a ciphertext here. And the key is two. How we would like to encrypt it? How we would like to decrypt it? Pening sedikit kan? Uh, <coughs> sir? Yes? Uh, saya protect tu bagi kepada dua grup. Saya protect bagi kepada dua grup. Macam mana you nak tahu jumlah saya protect yang sepatutnya? Maknanya jumlah column yang sepatutnya digunakan. How you would like to know that exactly? Okay, this column, the number of column. That should be used. Divide by two. Divide by two. Yes, we divide by two because we base on this number, right? So the first thing is, what should you do? You have to count, okay, the total number of ciphertext here first, like. D F N T E A T A L L E E D H E S W L. Okay, the number, the total alphabet here. How many alphabet here? Robert. How many? How many alphabet? There are seventeen, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. So this will be the number of column that should you have. Okay, kalau kita tengok sini, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17 is equal to the number of alphabet uh, character that we're going to have in this ciphertext. And then barulah kita divide into two. The key is going to use is two. Okay? Barulah kita divide here. Barulah kita masukkan. Okay. Uh, kita ambil daripada atas. D, E, apa? And then D, <coughs> sorry ya. Eh? D, F, N, T, <coughs> sorry. D, F, N, T, E, E, T, A, L. And then E, E, D, H, E, S, W, L. That is how we write it when we decrypt. Uh, dia terbalik sedikit. Berbanding in the encryption, what we do, we have to uh, read, uh, we have to write it in the geometry first, right? However, in decryption process, we have to write it in the column first and then follow by the next row. Uh, and then 
barulah kita baca ikut geometric to get the plain text. This is how we decrypt by using this kind of reference technique for uh, 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 sorry, this is how we decrypt it by using uh, reference technique lah to get the plain text. Okay, saya faham. Tapi tak apa, nanti kita akan buat uh, contoh dalam exercise minggu dah depan lah. Saya bagi secara uh, kata teori dahulu. Okay, untuk reference cipher, okay, uh, there are two rules, writing rules and uh, reading rules. Okay, for the reference cipher, for the encryption, okay, the first rule is how we write it. The first rule is how we write it. We write it using a geometric, okay, matrix here, geometric form. Uh, so using the geometric form here. And then how we write, uh, how we read, we read using column by column, the key. The first column and, uh, sorry, the first row and the second row. How to decrypt is in the reverse. We should know the total number of the alphabet. Okay, and then we draw this number of column. We already know, okay, how many row there are. There will be two row. And then is what is different between decrypt and encrypt. Okay, we just reverse it. Okay, before this, we have the first how the first uh, rules for encryption we have to write in geometry. However, the first rule for decryption, we have to write it in a row first. And then after we fill all the uh, ciphertext in the row, both of the row, how to read? We read it using the geometry. Itu uh, saja. Okay. Don't get confused. Okay. Kita akan buat latihan minggu hadapan. Okay. Boleh ya? Eh? Setakat ni faham? Faham. Faham. Saya tak buat ramai yang tak faham sebab kita buat online eh. Jadi keliru. Okay. Uh, banyak yang kita belajar hari ni. How to encrypt, how to decrypt. Okay. So, uh, inilah menerangkan how you would like to decrypt using a, uh, apa ni? A uh, real fan cipher lah. Okay. So, This is the uh, the example of the question. You boleh try lepas ni. Macam mana nak decrypt and encrypt. Tapi the key here is three. It apply the same rules. You have to find, okay, uh, the numbers semua follow the rules. Okay, alamak. Okay, tak apa. Saya rasa untuk another uh, transposition cipher, tak sempat untuk hari ni. Okay, because it's already 9.47. Okay, it's already 9.47. If I would like to explain this kind of transposition cipher, a uh, second type of transposition cipher, okay, it will really take a lot of more times lah. Because we are, they are going to, uh, there is another type of uh, transposition cipher using a matrix, okay. Ini saya akan terangkan minggu hadapan uh, dalam kelas face, uh, face to face nanti, okay. So, uh, kita stop di sini. We stop here uh, right now. Do you have any question? Kalau nak tanya apa yang tak faham ke sebelum ni, saya boleh ulang balik. Okay, saya boleh terangkan balik. I will, uh, I will explain uh, to all of you again. Okay, what you do, uh, you would like to know to get uh, to, I mean that to uh, to make sure that you really understand, okay, on the topics that we have covered today. Okay, do you have any question? Ada soalan? Tak ada. Tak ada? Clear eh? Tak pening eh belajar kriptografi? Mudah je kan? Boleh lah. Boleh lah eh. Okay tak apa nanti saya akan provide lah latihan supaya kamu boleh buat nanti. Kita akan buat dalam kelas lah minggu hadapan. Okay, hari yang sama, uh, we are going to have a meeting on next week, okay, for our lecture session on Tuesday at 8.30 a.m. Okay, so, uh, saya rasa that's all for today. I would like to thank to all of you who attend uh, our class today. 
Okay, saya hari ni ada 50 orang Sebenarnya masa on Masa bagi lecture ramai nak masuk Tapi saya deny semua Okay, because you did not meet Okay, the rules for my class lah Okay, saya kata masuk 8.30 Tak masuk juga pukul 9.30, pukul 10.00 baru lah Pukul 9, pukul 9 lebih baru nak masuk Jadi saya deny Okay, so terima kasih Thank you for all of you who attend my class And don't worry if we are going to have uh, and uh, we're going to have an exercise to make sure that all of you understand based on all the topics that have the uh, I mean that based on the all topics in this chapter okay if you would like uh, to get more okay knowledge how to uh, use this kind of algorithm you can also google it you can also google it uh, to find how to use and to make sure that you really understand to use this kind of technique because we are going to use all this kind of technique to answer the final exam or the midterm test question okay i think that's all today and i would like to wish a happy holiday to all of you okay because after this we're not going to have uh, any class until we met again on the next week on tuesday okay during the lecture session on at 8 uh, 30 a.m. Okay, at 30 a.m. in the morning. So that's all. Assalamualaikum and have a nice uh, day and nice weekend to all of you. Okay, and I would like to wish also happy Diwali to the uh, to uh, to the uh, Indian uh, student who are celebrating this. Uh, I mean, at this <coughs> this event. Okay, that's all from me. Assalamualaikum and. See you next week. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Welcome. Thank you, sir. Sama-sama. Thank you, sir. Welcome. Thank you, sir.